Today, I hope to convince you that a global database of suspected adverse drug events can provide quality data for the assessment of real-time safety concerns. In 2014, the EMA received applications for 100 medicines, 82 of which were approved. 41 of these were for new active substances, and seven received a positive opinion after an accelerated assessment. Etalalazib was reviewed by an accelerated assessment in 2014. Both the FDA and the EMA licensed it for use with rituximab in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and lymphoma. CLL affects around 4 in 10,000 people per year. It tends to occur around 70 years of age, and it's a slowly progressive disease, and therapy is usually conservative until the patient is symptomatic. CLL is characterized by an accumulation of cancerous monoclonal mature B cells in the bone marrow, blood, and lymph organs. The blood smear on the left is normal, while that on the right is from a patient with CLL. Idealalazib is a first-in-class phosphoinositide 3 kinase inhibitor. It blocks the effect of an enzyme called 3-IPK delta, which plays a number of roles in the life cycle of white blood cells. Knockout mice for this enzyme have been observed to have defects in T-cell-dependent antibody generation, and they can also envelop, develop inflammatory bowel disease. Therefore, the effects of etalalazib may not be limited to B lymphocytes. Licensure was based on interim clinical trial data, which included 220 subjects. Completion of these studies were obligations of approval. Risks identified in the clinical trials were neutropenia and infections. Given that the effects of etalalazib on the immune system had not been fully elucidated, an appropriate risk was included in the risk management plan as important missing information. In early March 2016, both the EMA and the FDA announced safety concerns for etalalazib. Six ongoing trials were halted due to an increased rate of serious adverse events, including death. The increased rates of death were observed in three clinical trials in the treatment arm evaluating the addition of etalalazib to standard therapy in first-line treatment of CLL, as well as relapsed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Most deaths were related to pneumocystis urovecchi pneumonia and cytomegalovirus infections. Prophylaxis for pneumocystis pneumonia was recommended for patients currently being treated with etalalazib. Pneumocystis pneumonia is an opportunistic infection which is most commonly reported in patients with AIDS. The host response involves a complex interplay between T cells, macrophages, dendritic cells, and neutrophils. Vigibase is a global database of suspected adverse drug reactions and is made by the, maintained by the UMC. As of May 2016, it contained over 13 million individual case safety reports. Does Vigibase reveal any problems with etalalazib? It currently contains 16 reports for pneumocystis infections. 13 have been spontaneously re been reported by physicians while only three have been obtained from clinical trials. The cases come from geographically distinct locations distributed over two continents, 14 cases from Europe and two from Australia. An IC greater than zero indicates that an adverse event has been observed more often than expected. A rise in IC and a narrowing of the confidence interval reveal that this safety concern was visible in Vigibase in 2015. Vigigrade is a measure of the completeness of individual case safety reports, with a maximum score being 1.0. Nine of 16 reports received for etalalazib had a Vigigrade score of greater than 0.8 or above. Physicians reporting their suspicions remains the integral mechanism for safety surveillance in the post-marketing period. Listening to their concerns will be more important than ever in an era of rapid access to medicines. Thank you very much for your attention. My name is Rebecca Chandler, and I proudly work for the Uppsala Monitoring Center.